Welcome back. Well, in our second segment this evening, we're focusing on this new book, Indira, India's most powerful prime minister, written by Sagrika Ghosh. It is a look at the life of our former prime minister, everything from her childhood to her relationship with her parents to her troubled marriage and, of course, her political career. And what makes this book interesting is that there are facets of Indira Gandhi that you learn about. Certainly, there were new things that I learned like, for example, about her relationship with her parents. Did you know that she was actually closer to her mother than she was to her father, Jawaharlal Nehru? And it paints a very complex portrait of a woman who was a very complex character. And, of course, the title says she was India's most powerful prime minister, but many would argue that perhaps India has moved on and that mantle has now been taken over by Narendra Modi. Well, to talk about that and more is the author, Sagrika Ghosh, here in the studio with us. We have a panel of senior journalists and editors joining us tonight. Nalini Singh here with us, Mr. N. Ram joining us from Chennai, and Mr. Shahid Siddiqui also joining us tonight. Sagrika, thanks very much for this and congratulations again. What I found particularly interesting was how you have penned your own letters as if you're talking to Indira Gandhi and trying to figure her out. And what makes the book particularly interesting is that you can't paint her either as a great dictator nor as a great democrat. And she, she's extremely complex. Absolutely. Uh, you know, as I, uh, as I investigated her persona and her life, Nidhi, I found that this was a woman who was cast in many shades. Uh, she was someone who imposed the emergency, but also someone who revoked the emergency. Uh, she was someone who uh, swore by her father's ideals, but in the end turned her back also on her father's ideals. Uh, she was someone who uh, believed in removing princely privileges, in uh, taking away privileges from the hereditary princes, but she brought dynasty and hereditary principle to politics. So she was a bundle of contradictions, uh, someone who uh, uh, very much wanted to cultivate intellectuals and uh, meet authors and writers, but failed in a way to give India perhaps a new intellectual direction. But I found that the personal and the political intersected very, very intimately in her life. Uh, her politics was very shaped by uh, the personal factors that went into her makeup. And I also wanted to look at her from the point of view of today, you know, from the point of view of 2017, which is why I wrote the letters, that perhaps a citizen of India or a journalist like you, like me, may have certain questions about her, you know, that why did you impose the emergency? How could you, the daughter of Nehru, turn your back on democratic idealism? How could you, for example, uh, also, uh, you know, uh, 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 for split the Congress, which, uh, which in the end uh, almost destroyed the party? So uh, there were a lot of questions that I thought citizens might have. And in a fanciful attempt at a dialogue with a ghost, I thought it would be interesting for the citizen of India to yeah. kind of uh, read these letters. It's, it's also interesting because she comes across as a rather insecure young woman, doesn't she? And yes. then sort of grows in confidence over a period of time but still yet somehow at the core remains insecure which is perhaps why it explains some of the decisions that she made would you would you agree absolutely i think she remained uh, did you ever read a school poem called the lady of shallot yeah uh, tennyson's poem the lady of shallot did you ever read it yes, yes. Uh, you know, the Lady of Shalott is mysteriously cursed and is, is imprisoned in this castle. Yeah. Uh, yet she's also a woman of tremendous beauty. So I think uh, Indira Gandhi was a woman of tremendous personal grace and, and humanity even, but really caged in this castle of paranoia, insecurity, uh, you know, anger, uh, fierce rage, her, her inability to forgive and forget, and also her deep sense of threat. Uh, with political rivals. You know, anyone within the, her party who showed any signs of any form of political um, virility, hmm. immediately it was off with his head. So, you know, so that's she interesting you say that. Rivals. Mr. Ram, does that sound like someone else you may have heard <laughs> of? <laughs> I think it's very, very hard to compare. Indira Gandhi was born in 1917 with uh, the person you're hinting at, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi was born in uh, 1950, uh, totally, you know, from totally different uh, streams in politics and uh, social life. Um, she came from, uh, she was a child of the freedom struggle. She, the, she was born in the crucible of the freedom struggle. Uh, he comes from a di completely different uh, pedigree. Uh, 
the RSS line. He was a uh, not, uh, he was a pracharak, not just a swayam sevak, and I think the, it's impossible to compare the two. Indira Gandhi was a formidable prime minister. Whether she was the most powerful, I don't know, because you, you'll have to factor in Jawaharlal Nehru, who was, uh, you know, he was totally dominant at that time. His party was, but he also in the party, uh, until certain setbacks occurred at any rate. So I think it's very, very hard to compare. But basically, uh, historian, you know, if you if you take a historical view, you don't necessarily judge. You interpret, and I just got my hands on Sagarika's book, which arrived in the post today, uh, and uh, I want to read it. But uh, she's, I think, interpreted various things and presented a very mixed uh, picture, it, tried to balance it as best as she can, and I look forward to reading it. Not but to compare oh, yeah. Indira Gandhi with Narendra Modi is not a worthwhile exercise. It's not a worthwhile exercise, Nani Singh, but people often do it. I, I mean, people often compare them for various reasons, for being, you know, very st strong leaders in that they have appropriated power, you know, very cent centralized power, uh, and the sort of tendencies uh, seem, seem to be very similar. You know what I'm hinting at. Uh, or, or is, it, is, is it a worthwhile comparison, uh, or do you agree with Enram that it's not? You know, I think in uh, two or three uh, facets, it's very worthwhile. Indira Gandhi's patriotism uh, was unquestionably, she was uh, the custodian of the sovereignty of the Indian people in a way, and I, nobody has contested that. Uh, her patriotism and Narendra Modi's hyper-nationalism, if you are not with me. You're against me. Yeah. So I would say that you know these are these are people as N. Ram says born 50 years apart or 43 years or 37 years apart or whatever, and yet they have come up with the same uh, feeling. I'm not going to call it a formula. The second thing is that they each one of them has talked about being pro poor, and uh, if if you look at uh, Indira Gandhi, she had uh, privy purses abolished, bank nationalisation, um, she had hatao. 20 point program, etc. And Gharibi stayed in India, as uh, Sagarika book says, that since uh, from 1947 to 83, the, the proportion of the poor in India stayed absolutely the same. Now, if you look now, you have uh, demonetization, you have uh, lots of other programs which are, which are saying that they are pro poor. And there is a wonderful little anecdote from Inder Malhotra, and I'm, you know, you read between the lines what I'm saying. Inder Malhotra, according to Sagarika's book, says that when bank nationalization happened, he went to a place where there were some rickshawalas and they were dancing in the street. So he said that, have you ever been to a bank, in, inside a bank? They said, no. They said, will you go inside a bank? They said, no. So he said, why are you dancing? He said, because for the first time, something has been done for the poor mm. and the rich will be suffering. So sounds now, very similar. It sounds very so. So there, there, there are sim, uh, similarities and, and, and some echoes. Shahid Siddiqui, what do you think? I mean, is, 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 is this the right time to judge whether Indira Gandhi was the most powerful prime minister we had? Was it Nehru or is it undoubtedly Narendra Modi? What do you think? Let me first congratulate Sagarika because we need more and more such books to, to really objectively look at people who have played important uh, role in the uh, post-independent India. And since we have moved a bit away from Indira Gandhi, we, can, we are in a position to now look back and try to analyze it at her objectively. Uh, it will be wrong to compare M Modi ji with uh, Indira ji, uh, because history will judge Modi ji. It's, it's too early to judge Modi ji whether he's a, a strong prime minister, powerful prime minister or not. Thirdly, I agree with Andram that Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was the strongest prime minister because he was in a situation where he could be strong. Indira Gandhi, as you said, is a very complex character because she was dealing with very, very complex times. Post-65, after he oh. attacked by Pakistan, uh, Congress losing all its uh, position, but the, the huge divide within the Congress, she was dealing with very, very difficult situation. India was insecure, so Indira was insecure. And in that situation, she was able to come up with whatever she was able to gather forces with which to protect this country and to make this country a great again. But insecurity remained with her. Uh, my father went to jail during emergency in 90, uh, at the age of 80, but he, he gave me the first interview in 1977. And I, I, I met her for the first time in 1977 and I could see 
how uh, concerned she was about the people. She was a character who uh, who had her problems or her insecurities, but she did not allow her own problems to uh, you know overtake the situation she was dealing with. And she was able to make a huge comeback in 1980. That was also. Uh, Credit to her because in 1977 we thought that Indra is finished, she will never come back. So she is one of the finest characters of history, not only in India but globally. We will judge Modi ji after say 20 years. It will be wrong to judge him now. In interesting point, Sagrika. Uh, also, the other uh, interesting aspect of the book is that you've been able to delve a fair amount into her personal life, into her marriage, and so on. Uh, and that's pretty rare, when, especially when we write about political leaders in this country. Uh, did the Congress resist that in any way? They no, not at all, in or, fact. Or were they open to not it? Not at all. In fact, I, I uh, met Priyanka Gandhi. Yeah, uh, you've quoted before, her many times. Uh, yeah. yeah, before I, writing the book, I actually sought a meeting with her, and she was very kind to, enough to meet me. And she gave me a long, uh, and she gave me the benefit of a very long conversation, and gracefully never asked me what kind of book I was writing. So you know, my book is very critical hmm. of Indira Gandhi. Uh, in, I, I mean, it I, is, it's I, not I, fawning I, at all. It's, yeah. it's not a hagiography, yeah. but it, nor is it a vilification. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want it to be a hagiography or a muckraker's account. Uh, but uh, she, you know, she never asked. So, so I, she didn't really speak that much, obviously, about the personal stuff. But the personal stuff is widely, you know, it's actually widely available. I mean, there are 150 biographies of Indira Gandhi. I just want to say a little bit about the powerful bit. You know, the reason why I've called her the most powerful prime minister is because from 66 to 84, except for a small gap of two years, she ruled with absolute power and absolute supremacy within her party in a way that Nehru perhaps never did because Nehru was of course the colossus but he didn't create a party around just himself as she did in 69 and then again she split the party in 78 and created a party around herself so she was all in all within that Congress party she imposed her writ on that party she imposed her writ on the government and as Inder Malhotra told me when I interviewed him that when it came to power politics she left her papu flat on the mat. So, so as a ruthless politician, hmm. I think she perhaps was a step ahead of Nehru, even though perhaps he was far greater a statesman and a colossus and a, and a stronger figure. But you're right, the personal, I think, uh, was very interesting for me to discover, particularly her relationship with Nehru, which, you know, uh, to my surprise, I found was, was, of course, very close. And he was at her beck and call and he was, uh, she was at his beck and call and she was his attendant. But they were not, it was not a very uh, warm relationship. It and that she was very to close me. to her mother, which I she found very interesting. She was closer to her mother. Yeah. Mr. Ram, uh, you know, on this point about the emergency and Indira Gandhi, it is often invoked by the BJP even today uh, against the Congress that, well, you were the party that invoked the emergency, you suspended fundamental rights at that time. And as Shahid Siddiqui said, she came back with a thumping majority in 1980. What do you think explained that at that time? I think what explains it is the lack of a credible opposition. It, look, it looked promising to start with, but it's too much of a uh, mixed bag for them to really deliver what they promised. People get quickly disillusioned. They saw through the uh, Janata experiment, and they had n nothing else. They had to fall back on the only viable alternative, which was, uh, which, which was Indira Gandhi. But, uh, uh, but the, the, uh, Indira Gandhi's uh, shining achievement was the way she stood up to the United States in a very, very difficult situation, which I don't think anyone else has faced. Uh, perhaps Nehru did, Absolutely. but nobody else faced that kind of crisis. The crisis in East Pakistan, the refugees pouring in Absolutely. the middle. Absolutely, her finest them. moment. And yeah. the way she handled it, not just her, but, the, but con Absolutely. I think in a consultative way, involving various uh, elements of the polity, I think the way she handled it was uh, exemplary. And that was really her uh, peak, her shining moment. Uh, the, the, you know, she may have made a big difference to the liberation of uh, what was East Pakistan and the, the birth of uh, uh, Bangladesh. The way she stood up to Nixon and so on, I think uh, that qualifies her so, to so be I, I, regarded as one of uh, I, India's I, uh, great prime ministers. I just give the last 30 seconds. But notwithstanding yeah. uh, the horrible record during the emergency. Absolutely. So I, I was one of I, I, I was old enough to. Yeah. Uh, to be part of it, we fought. We tried to fight it, and I remember how dark it looked. And suddenly, unexpectedly, elections were called, and 
they were routed. And so, so Nalini, in 30 that's, seconds, that's what... something that you have to live with. So what what, goes what to would her her le legacy be then? I mean, the tough dictator, the betrayed wife, insecure daughter, national <laughs> heroine, all these are the sort of adjectives on the book cover. That's w the publisher's uh, yeah. pitch. But, but yeah, how, how would you sort of define her legacy then? You know, I think that the legacy of her or Mr. Narendra Modi or people, you know, the, the people we are not mentioning just now, one should remember one thing, that actually the, uh, the decisions these people take at what we slavishly call the high level, these are high level decisions, actually they affect our lives for a minimum of 50 years later. Half a century later, we are still discuss uh, we are still discussing her. Similarly, you know, Bangladesh, etc. So we should just say the legacy of these people. Watch them so carefully because for the next fifty years, we will live or our successors will live. And with I, it. I think that's a point that Sagrika has made as well on the kind of politics that the Congress practices today, tracing that back. Uh, to, to Indira Gandhi. Thank you very much to all of you for joining us. Actually, it's a fascinating uh, conversation to have and I wish we had more time on it, but do read the book if you can. Thanks a lot. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night.